Okay, so now basically restoring the degraded habitat is one of the way we can actually conserve. Okay, as we, as we do know that, okay, sometimes uh, when the habitat degraded already, we transport the animal, we transfer the animal to a zoo, to a captive breeding, we transport the plant to this uh, botanical garden, but our aim is not to keep them permanently. I say that we, I mean, our aim is not permanently keep them in a, a, a captive breeding uh, facility. What we want, we want to actually return them or release them back to the habitat. But the thing here is their original habitat have been degraded. So what we can actually do here, okay, to restore back the degraded habitat. So one of the past year paper in the ASA come out, uh, ask how we can restore back the degraded habitat, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we involve the restoring the area that have been degraded either by the human's activity or natural catastrophes. Okay, in this case, I like flood, uh, uh, forest fire, hurricanes, typhoon, even earthquakes, okay, how we can do. We can do it on a small scale, okay? So one small scale we can do here, sorry, this um, is a point form here. So what we're going to do here is sometimes the land is no longer suitable for uh, the farmer to plant the crop plant, right? Not so suitable anymore. But we do know that in the particular area suitable to plant certain other plants, they might not be the crop plants, they might not be the crop plants, but we can actually replant some of the tree to make them a suitable habitat, okay? So this area, okay, this area now can be restored back for a particular small animal to survive there, okay? The plantation area, let's say, for example, oil palm, okay? The area because of pH of the soil change due to pollutions and something, then it's no longer suitable to be right, to, to use it as a crop plants area. We do, we can actually plant different type of tree so that it create a new habitat for some small animal, even though the area is small, okay? Huh? So this no longer needed for crop plantation or become degraded by the overuse already, then we start to plant for uh, certain uh, uh, tree or, or grass so that it's suitable, okay? For some animals to live there. And also replanting the mangrove also important in the wetlands. Okay, mangrove we do know that they act as the burial or what we call these uh the protections okay, to the coastal habitats. Okay, so wetlands with high diversity at risk of the rising sea level. So planting mangrove offers some protections. Okay, and we do know the mangrove forest uh important for the eco services because they reduce the coastal erosion. Because we do know that due to the wave, uh, means our coastal erosion take place. But with the mangrove, we will be able, okay, to reduce. Not we can't stop, but we reduce the coastal erosion. They act as a barrier, as I say that, by trapping the sediments, and also important nursery for the young fishes okay now we do have the problems of okay, let's say for example for certain country they are very, very small country like singapore or in malaysia let's say for our state in penang okay penang islands so overpopulation take place so how we actually cohabit between the humans and also the animal again okay, most of the time we do this what we call the land reclamations so land reclamation basically we build artificial islands okay so this very very common in the asia and also the middle east country okay so but the thing is what we need to do here is we want to actually have the humans cohabit with the the the, the animal and the wildlife so how we can do here is we do have this new branch of the study what we call it ecological engineering so if you compare these two diagrams here, if you compare these two diagrams, you can see that one is without, okay, the artificial islands that built without any eco-engineering and this with eco-engineering. So in this case, you can see that we don't have the mangrove. So if without the mangrove here, it means that these islands may, do, may, may face this, the erosion, right? the coastal region erosion. And the low biodiversity due to the limited habitat availability and the poor water quality with no natural biofuel, okay, then it will not suitable for the coral to survive. Okay, so for example, no mangrove and also the shrimp ponds hot and with no shade. So basically, they won't be able to survive well. But now with this eco, we call it this uh 
eco engineering, we can put a reef ball. A reef ball basically is something in the hard surfaces for the uh, oyster, for the or it is, uh, the coral to attach and start to grow as the coral reef. So as a coral reef, then coral reef it provides a an ecosystem. We have the rehab uh, sea grasses beds provide habitats for the fish. We have the mangrove provide the coastal protection. We do have the artificial wetlands. Okay, so that we can help to treat the discharge waste water. And you can see that we do have the mangrove and the plantations allow the seabirds and also the some form of animal to survive. So it means that humans can survive. I mean, with the uh, building but most of the region still maintains with the eco, they maintain the, uh, we maintain the ecosystem, okay? This is what we call, as a first, we look at this is the terrestrial, terrestrial ecosystem, how we can actually uh, restore and coastal ecosystem, okay? Now we look at how about the marine ecosystem, okay? Now, what we do have here, the problem is, because of the increase of the sea level, increase of the climate, the temperature, what will happen here is coral bleaching take place. So it means that coral no longer able to survive. So if you want to restore back, first thing we need to have a very, very uh, solid, okay, uh, we've got a solid uh, surface for this reef or this coral to grow. So what we do have here is the artificial reef. Okay, artificial reef generally provides the hard surface where algae and uh, invertebrates such as barnacle, coral, and oyster to attach and start to grow. So the accumulation of the uh, attached marine life in, uh, in turn provide the intricate structure and food for the fishes. So it means that when they start to attach, right, the coral start to attach and grow, then it will, for, it will form uh, a habitat. Okay, so many reefs are built using the object they uh, were built for other purpose. For example, we sink the oil rich, okay, uh, ships, uh, wreckage, and also deploy the rubble or the construction debris. Okay, so after, uh, other artificial reefs uh, have the same purpose, like a reef ball or PVC or concrete. We purposely dump them into the oceans, provide a solid surface and hard surface for the reef to, uh, or this coral grow. So one of the example in Thailand, in the Gulf of Thailand, the Thailand's uh, army tank, the 25 old army tanks, they actually drop them into the Gulf or the Thailand's provide a hot, uh, the, this hard surface for the uh, coral to grow. And they also use the bio rocks, create extraordinary uh, accelerated growth of the coral as well. So in this case, what we do, they actually apply small electrical current through the water around it. So the mineral are, mineral are encouraged to accumulate on the surface of this uh, bio rock so that the coral will be able to grow fast. Again, you can see that this is like something like a PVC pipe, steel or concrete allow the growth of the coral. And you can see that at the side, without the hard surface, the sand, the muddy water, you know, the mud. So it means that they won't be able to grow. But now with this artificial uh, reef, then the coral will be able to grow. So there's another way to restore back the habitat. Okay.